Welcome, and it's my pleasure to see you here again in this session. In this session, we will discuss one of the most important parameters we need to understand it when we discuss the topic of water chemistry. This parameters, you can find it important in all water system. When we discuss cooling system, boilers, steam generation, wastewater, drinking water, and all other water chemistries. Let's start together and elaborate more and more and understand the topic of water hardness. Water hardness. Simply the def definition of water hardness is the amount of dissolved calcium and magnesium ions in water. This is a bit simple definition in chemistry. But for the people and scientists who are interested to know more about, more about hardness, we can sometimes include strontium, barium within these uh, ions represent hardness. So hardness in general, we would say that it's the amount of calcium and magnesium ions concentration in the water. But when we have high level of strontium and barium, it play a role as well as uh, hardness ions in the water. So here we have two definitions. If somebody said that it's ion and ions of calcium and magnesium, we would say, yes, it's correct. But for those people who are real working as scientists or specialists, specialists, we can understand that, yes, barium and strontium are playing a role in the hardness. Now, hardness, you can find it in wide range of application in your daily activities. For example, if you have water heat heaters, you would find that there are some wide precipitates on the heater or in the heating rod those precipitates are calcium carbonate or other hardness uh, salts precipitating on that the heat transfer surface. Sometimes you can find it as a soup scum in, in toilets, in washing machines, in different places where the water has some hardness and we utilize and uses some, we, can, we may use some detergents there. The, the, you will find a reaction between hardness and those detergents and you would find that there are some white scums precipitated on the sink or in other parts of the water system there and you can f find different definitions and classifications of hardness but let's classify them according to their nature in chemistry so sometimes we say that we have calcium hardness and we have as well as magnesium hardness Clearly, calcium hardness is related to calcium concentration and dissolved calcium ion in the water, which are represented as calcium hardness. Or when we have the, when we want to represent the hardness in terms of magnesium salt ions, we can say that it's magnesium hardness. So either we would say that calcium hardness or magnesium hardness, and of course we have the total hardness which combines all those ions there. Or in the other way of classification, we would say that we have permanent hardness and temporary hardness. Depends on some factors, as we will see it soon. These are different examples here. This is this is an example of uh, calcium scales there in a pipeline where you can find calcium carbonate or other salts precipitated inside the pipelines, like in, in boilers and in, like in hot water systems, in cooling system, you would find some examples. Here easily you can find what we call it soup scum. There is a reaction between the detergent and the hardness in water. So it gives you um, a white spot there in, in, in your sink or in, in any water system there. And here you can find another example of scales precipitate, precipitation due to high hardness level in the water. So these are different examples of hardness and the associated precipitations and the scaling inside the pipelines, which is coming mainly from the hardness. According to the USGS, which is United States, geological surveys they have four classifications of water depends on their hardness now if the water has hardness between 0 to 60 bbm as calcium carbonate or you or you can say that um, milligram calcium carbonate per liter so if the hardness in that water is within that range we would say that this is a soft water which equals 
0.03.5 GPG, which is grains per gallon, which is a unit to measure the hardness in mainly in the USA and other countries. But if the water hardness is between 61 to 120 BBM as calcium carbonate, we would say that this water is a moderate hard water according to the classification of USGS. But on the other side, if we have a little bit more hardness between 121 to 180, that we would say this water is hard water. Hard means it has high level of hardness as calcium carbonate or total hardness. And that is equivalent to 7.06 to 10.51 as GPG, grains per gallon, which is the unit used in the USA. But finally, if we have any water with a hardness more than 180 BBM as calcium carbonate, we would say that this water is a very hard water. Okay, so keep that fact in mind and just remember this, this classification as per the USGS. In some countries, we may find different classifications, different definitions of hard water, soft water, and very hard water. No problem, but the concept is there. When we have high hardness, we can say that this water is hard, and when we have low hardness level, we can say that this water is soft. Soft and hard depends on how much hardness we have in that water. And when we say just a general term hardness that means total hardness includes calcium hardness and magnesium hardness together okay so when we say just a, a hard water that we have high level of calcium carbonate and uh, of calcium ions and magnesium ions so represented as total hardness but when we specify that this is a calcium hardness or magnesium hard hardness that means we are talking about the hardness coming specifically from that ion Hope it's clear and hope we can differentiate between those two measurement units. So simply, the first measurement unit of hardness, we call it BBM or milligram per liter as calcium carbonate, which is the most widely used uh, measurement units in many countries all over the world. So if you give me a water, I would say that this water has 100 BBM as calcium hardness of calcium hardness as calcium carbonate, okay, which we can find it here. But in some countries like in the USA, they sometimes use the term GPG, which is grains per gallon. Uh, which is also another way to represent hardness. But at the end, end of the day, you can convert from BBM calcium carbonate to GPG easily with multiplication factors, okay? And as all of you know that when we have hardness in the water, for example, here in the form of calcium carbonate, which is CAHCO3, 2, uh, that means when we have a heating of or when we have any heating source to that water with this hardness that would form uh, calcium carbonate precipitation plus carbon dioxide evaporation and uh, producing H2O. So keep in mind that when we increase the temperature or boil the water with hardness, we may have a precipitation of calcium carbonate out of that water. So this is a very important principle, which is the main principle of scaling inside pipelines, scaling on heat exchangers, scaling on steam generation systems and others. Now, there's a very important point here to, to talk about temporary hardness and permanent hardness. So we have two classifications of the hardness inside your water sample. So imagine you have a water sample there and we need to classify the hardness inside. We can say that this hardness in this water is the temporary hardness and this hardness in this water again is a permanent hardness. Based on what we can classify them, simply based on whether this hardness can be removed by boiling or not. Simply temporary hardness, which is hardness, uh, which is hardness related to uh, calcium bicarbonate, which can be removed by boiling. So if I have calcium carbonate, as you can see in this reaction, and we have boiling there, we may remove this hardness and form calcium carbonate. That's why we call it temporary hardness, because this hardness will be removed 
uh, when we have boiling okay on the other side the permanent hardness which is the hardness that cannot be removed by boiling okay which is mainly caused due in the prison due to the presence of uh, uh, sulfate and chloride uh, uh, compounds like for example calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate calcium chloride magnesium chloride and water so this temporary permanent hardness cannot be removed by boiling number one number two it's mainly coming from the calcium sulfate magnesium sulfate calcium chloride magnesium chloride i hope now we understand the classifications of water according to you to the usgs united states geological survey and by the way this uh, this if you open their website you can find very important and fruitful information talking about different type of water and hardness and so and so and number two we now we can classify and understand the difference between permanent hardness which is mainly due to uh, the salts of sulfate and chloride and on the other side the temporary hardness which is mainly coming from the bicarbonate salts of calcium and magnesium now i want to present for you one of the very important examples here when we talk about hardness some people think that if we have the same country or the same city we may have a uh, equal hardness of the well water or underground water this is a very common mistake that for example if we are talking about the same city or the same state or even the same country wherever you dig and to get a well water there you would find the same hardness in the well water and this principle should be clarified here in these coming examples Let's see here in the case of the United States. Here in the United States, you can find in some areas, we have very soft water. So the water hardness will not exceed 60 BBM as calcium carbonate, as you can see here in, in, in the east the part of the United States. On the other side, in some parts of the United States, you can find there is also very hard water there where the hardness could exceed 180 BBM as calcium carbonate, as you can see in these areas, for example, which is uh, in the red color. And other parts in the United States and other uh, states or even cities, uh, you, may, you may find the hardness ranging from soft water to hardness of more than 200 BBM as calcium carbonate. So the idea here, there is no rule of thumb or exact value expected when you get a well water from different parts of, of a country or of a city, because that depends on the geographical location, that depends on the depth of your well or underground water, that depends on the well water the quality there also that depends of whether we have a reservoir underground reservoir or not so there are many factors plays a role here so whenever we have a desalination project whenever we have a cooling water whenever we have any requirement of well water in any country in the world not in the case here only of the united states but in any country and i have seen that by myself in different countries Whenever we dig or we extract well water or ground water, we need to analyze the hardness and doesn't expect that it's going to be equal to that well or to that part of the country. Okay. Here the same example of the United States, but represented by the unit of GPG, grains per gallon. Uh, in, in the previous one, we have seen it as BBM of calcium carbonate. Now here we can see the same example, but as GPG. The same principle can be applied in all countries in the world. See this example as well. Here, for example, we can see the England part where we can find again some areas has very soft water, uh, like in these uh, light green areas. But there are other areas in the England which has very hard water on the underground water or okay or, or uh, well water so that depends on uh, many factors so always keep in mind this fact when we want to examine or when we extract any ground water that the quality will not be equal from the same country or even from the same city we discuss here hardness. Hardness is very important and key factor for all water system, for even for starting from drinking water 
till we go to wastewater and recycling water and any type of water systems and water applications. In the coming sessions, we will discuss other parts in our journey with the water chemistry. We will discuss alkalinity, which is a very important factor. We will discuss salt solubility as well. We will discuss TSS, which is with, uh, total suspended solids. And as well as we will discuss LSI, which is Langolier Saturation Index and at many other parameters we will discuss it during our journey in water systems and as well as in water chemistry so be ready and be open and whenever whenever you have any question just write it down contact me through the chat and i will do my best to answer you correctly and as fast as i can hope this session was simple for you to talk about hardness there are many things to be discussed yet in the hardness such as a hardness analysis, uh, hardness interferences, what are the applications of hardness, how we can control hardness precipitation in, in systems. But I think when we get this course and other courses, you will gain more insight, more understanding of the importance of hardness of your water systems and also about water quality and water chemistry. Thank you and see you in the coming session. Goodbye.